It's always uh, kind of rough getting started when I'm working by myself. Graduate student Elaine Miller must prepare herself for her research. Oh, so they're easy today. I mean, they're right there. <laughs> they're ready to go. And before this story goes any further, you, the viewer, should also brace yourself hey for what you are about to see. And get ready to be overwhelmed by cuteness. So this is Liesl right here, the one that approaches us first. Uh, she's the dominant female. You've got to admit, lemurs are just plain cute. And the Duke Lemur Center is an island of intense cuteness in the middle of the Duke Forest. I'm just going to set my stuff down and set up my camera again. The center is also home to the most diverse colony of lemurs outside of Madagascar. There are about 246 individuals. So Liesl wants to get to the boxes right away, which is typical. This is Johan right here with the yellow collar. And that makes the facility a global leader in lemur research. So right now we have Liesl at this box. Which is what brought Miller to Durham from her studies at the University of California at Davis. She's researching the concept of social learning. In other words, can primates learn behaviors just by watching each other accomplish a task? So we have Arrakis at box seven, we have Rolf at box five, we have Liesl at box four. It's demonstrating that they are um, watching each other to some degree at least, um, which is basically what we're looking for to see if they watch each other and if they become interested in the boxes after someone else solves it or gets a grape. Miller places a grape in each wood box. She then closes the opening with a wooden plug. Once the lemur smells the treat, it must figure out how to pop the lid and then reach in to get the grape. I mean, we see that they're looking at each other and we see that once one lemur gets a treat, the other lemurs come to see what's happening. But um, it is really difficult to say um, if they're actually observing and focused, you know, because we don't know what they're thinking. But we do see evidence that they are paying attention to each other because they come once one of the other lemurs has gotten the grape. There's also the question of whether more can be learned if there are more things to watch. So Liesl's now at box six, you have Schroeder at box three, you have Johan at box one. Or is it better to learn in a smaller group where a certain behavior can be more closely observed? Watch what is happening. Um, and so you can kind of see Brigitte saw that she got, or Gretel, excuse me, saw that she got a grape and now she wants to go over there and check out the box which is learning still. I mean, they're learning that there's grapes in there, but we don't know if they're actually learning the method to forage. One thing that we, I've seen um, that we've noticed is that it takes the males usually a lot longer to get the grapes out of the boxes than females. So we see the males will struggle. Um, a female will come and displace that male and the female will reach in immediately and get the grape. So it seems like the males have a much more difficult time with getting the grapes out. There are about 75 species of lemurs. The Duke Lemur Center cares for 17 of them. and. What makes lemurs so fascinating, besides the fact that they're incredibly adorable, is that all those species live on one island, Madagascar, and through the years they have adapted to fill dozens and dozens of ecological niches. The thinking is, by studying how lemurs adapt to change, you learn more about how people can adapt to change. And they're excited, so you can tell they're excited because they're jumping on the, on the fence. So. That's always good. Miller's work on learning behavior is one of 90 separate ongoing research studies being conducted at the Lemur Center. Okay, so that's Licinius right there. And he just opened the box while scent marking. So you can see that he's rubbing his wrists. That's box six. And he's reaching in to get the grape. So Licinius is pretty good. He knows that if he scent marks the right way, he can open the box and he'll get a treat. And it looks like Telus just saw that and so she's interested in the box now. Researchers have discovered that females are dominant in lemur colonies and though males rub their scent glands in their wrists and shoulders to mark the box, they are then displaced by females. So the trends have definitely changed um, since the beginning of the project. For example, before the lemurs really knew there were grapes inside or they really knew what the boxes were about, the males had tons of access to the boxes because the females were uninterested, they didn't know what was in them. 
so there was no displacing going on or very little. And now that the females are aware that there's grapes and that they can get treats, they displace the males immediately. Another cool trend that we've seen is, is that the males have a very specific way of opening and we saw that by their scent marking. And females tend to open the boxes by sitting on them and stepping their foot in. So they have like a, exclusively different ways of opening the boxes. In addition to the active studies, the center recently made available to the public almost 50 years of data on all of the lemurs that have lived at the center. That includes information on diet, growth rates, genetics, breeding seasons, and behavior on about 3,600 lemurs. That kind of in-depth data will never be able to be collected again. So all this data that we've been collecting over time helps us to manage our current population and make sure that it continues into the future. Because lemurs are endangered, maintaining a healthy and genetically diverse population is one of the lemur center's primary goals. The last lemurs were taken out of Madagascar in 1993. The center works with scientists in Madagascar to conserve the wild lemur population. They're very cute, they're very personable. And one of the reasons that people find them so cute and personable is that, you know, they are like humans, they're primates. And so they share some of our evolutionary history. And so we can find out more about the history of human evolution because there are some shared periods in there. The lemurs now living at the center are descendants of the first animals brought from the island. Researchers say lemurs have taught us much about behavior and biology and all the while being cute. So there are things we can learn about um, biological processes by studying them. Also, we just want to know about lemurs. They're a fascinating biological group of organisms, and we want to know, and they're endangered. We want to know, learn about them just for the sake of knowing about these organisms and how, how they live, what their differences are between the species. Um, and by learning that, we can better conserve them.